that that you can. So happy to be here again tonight. I want to once again appreciate the leadership of the church um, in bringing me. There is a lot of risk. The one why you're pooping to somebody you don't you don't know much. Only once you know, so you still risk. <laughs> 
Thank you very much, sir. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's go into God's word. Is that okay? When Daddy was speaking to me, uh, the very first day I came, he said, the people can get healed and still end up in L5. So, it's important that we equip ourselves properly. And uh, why it is important to be delivered and to be healed, it is more important that our lives are changed. Hallelujah. John said, I wish above all things, called John 2, right? That thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So, it means that if your soul is prospering properly, it is inevitable that your health and your finance will respond also. If your soul is prospering properly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we began to talk about the ideal home and uh, we've been laying foundation since the very first day. And there are many to talk about, like I said, about the home. There are a lot of things to teach. On Sunday, by God's grace, uh, I will deal with the home properly. Hallelujah. So, but then today we will still um, continue the foundation we are laying. Then maybe on uh, on Sunday we will put some blocks and then we will be out. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we got to say that um, the problem with the home starts from the parties in the home. If the people in the home are not ideal, they cannot raise an ideal home. So I would say the very first thing that is necessary is that the parties should know Jesus. And I, I, I would say it is, it is one thing to know Jesus and another thing to know the church. You can know the church, you can have a church name, you can have a church attendance, and yet you don't know Jesus. And worst of all, Jesus did not know you. To claim you know Jesus is easy for anybody. But for Jesus to know you is a different thing entirely. So it's important that Jesus knows you. And we began to share that every one of us must examine ourselves if we are in the faith. The Bible says if we judge ourselves, 1 Corinthians 11, 31, we will not be judged. So I began to share the, the tools, the litmus paper you can use to test whether you are a child of God. And so that you will not find out at the end of your life that Jesus did not know you. So you, you can know today if Jesus knows you or not. So Paul said, examine yourself if you are in the faith. And the first thing that we mentioned is the uh, sin, right? That if you are a child of God, you will not find sin comfortable. Either to commit sin or to dwell in sin, you will not find it comfortable. And it is not some sins. It has to be, you have a, a, a wholesome approach towards sin. Even the smallest, slightest lie will not leave you disabled. Because you are alive. Because you are alive, even if they use a pin to hit you, to, 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 to they stab you with a pin, you feel the pain, right? Because you are alive. 
So the tiniest sin will not go down well with you. Hallelujah. So, um, in number two, we said that you must have a hunger for the word of God. And that is very, very important. Christians today don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to know God for themselves. They want someone else to do all the work. They don't mind paying a pastor to pray for them. <laughs> they don't want to know God for themselves. And everybody can know God. The veil has been torn. We are no longer at uh, Mount Sinai. Are we? Hallelujah. We are now in Mount Zion. In Mount Sinai, they came to meet with God. And then the mountain was on fire. And there was earthquake. And God descended on the mountain. And um, when the people saw the mountain on fire, <laughs> they told Moses, Moses, you know, you mean it's the God you want us to come and listen to? <laughs> so please, we beg you. You go and be, you can go and enter the fire and go and talk to God. <laughs> we, for anything he, he tells you, just come and tell us. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't want to see him, we don't, we don't want him to see us. <laughs> then, when Moses told God, God said, correct. So that is, how I, that is exactly how I want them to think. I want them to fear me so much that they won't want to commit sin again. Hallelujah. The same God that uh, appeared on the mountain, the mountain was on fire. That was the same God that came to us. To, uh, that came to Adam and there was no fire there was no burning there was no earthquake he came in quietly in his quietly hallelujah so in the new age we are now God wants to know everybody one by one the veil has been broken hallelujah every one of us God wants to be known I think it was in Jeremiah that God says no one should boast in their money or boast in their riches or boast in their horses or chariots. Say anybody that wants to boast, say you can boast too. There is a boast. I have boasted here small in the last two days. You would have seen me boasting small. So there is a boasting that is of God. Say let him that glories, glory only in the Lord. Let him glory in the fact that he knows me and understands me. Hallelujah. So the reason I understand that I cannot die before my time is not because I swam Babala with this time for me. Hallelujah. The reason I understand that I can never borrow before I eat. That boasting is not based on my strength. If you remove God from that boasting, yes. uh, I, I may not even live here alive. The only security I have to boast like that is that I have found in the word of God that there is a reality I can experience. And I believe that since the word of God cannot fail, that boasting cannot fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes when I preach and I say things like, I don't have a problem. <laughs> sometimes that will come to me and say, don't worry, I will show you a problem now. <laughs> I will show you what problem is. And I've been boasting like this, not today. It's been years. And every, every time he comes, I will just tell him again. <laughs> Except the bad word of God will fail. Now. Let the word of God fail first. Every time I teach that a child of God cannot die before his time, he will come back and say, eh, I will show you death. <laughs> but then you know where the boasting comes from? It's from the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So say, let him that glories glory in the fact that he knows me and understands me. So when you know God, you will boast. 
you will know that you can never be poor. Let the price of gari go to 10,000 naira per 10,000 naira, eh? you will still be able to afford it. If these things are not make believe, know what make believe means. Make believe means let me say it so that it will be so. No. Boasting the Lord means you say it because it is so. Not so that it will be so. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know it is possible to live your life without borrowing. I, I hope you know that it is covered in the provision of the, of, of the gospel. That you, some of you, you are already owing a lot of apps money. Eh? And then they will send message to you. <laughs> Pastor that was not when you borrowed money, they will send me a message. <laughs> they will say, if you see brother, so so so, roll from him. He's a very bad person. He borrowed money and refused to pay. Do you know that you can, you can live above that? There are all these things I write here. See, there are three ways to be prosperous in life. Understand this. You don't need to know God to, to prosper. How do you know that? I hope you know that. Is this strange to you? I hope you know you don't need to know God to be rich. Am I saying something strange? You don't need to be born again to have money. Eh? Eh? Uh-huh. Eh? But the richest people on earth, some of them are atheists. This one, the richest one, what's his name? Elon Musk. The guy is unsure if there is God or not. When they asked him, he said, mm, the way I look at it, so there is a kind of intelligence that is in charge of these things. Just to say that there is God, it was difficult for him. All of us are using Facebook. That Mark Zuckerberg, the guy is an atheist. And it's probably on the Top 10, richest people in the world. So understand that you don't need to know God to be rich. There is a way to be rich and prosperous by the laws of man. If you follow those laws, you will be rich. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't need to tithe at all or pay any offering to anybody. Eh? Just follow those principles that are available in the world system. They are not simple principles. So please understand. Sowing and reaping is not a Christian thing. Eh? When you when you when you plant your seed in the ground, we, we the ground ask, Are you a Christian? Okay, if you are a Christian, then the, the, the seed will grow. Eh? So these are laws that God himself has set in place. That if you follow those principles, as far as riches and prosperity is concerned, you can touch it. Without tithing, without offering, without giving to anybody. That is the way of men to be rich and prosperous. And it works. Now there is a way of demons to be rich. Ways of demons. You know them now. They need to consult a demon before they can be rich. Some of them need to sacrifice a living person. And the money will come. Abina, Yahoo Plus. Eh? They will cut some of this part of the body away. And then the money will truly to come. It has been, it has been available for long, not be today. <laughs> so there is a demonic way to be rich. And prosperous, but then there is a God's way to be prosperous. So you see, when you don't understand the difference between the three, you know, people will talk in the world and you'll be confused. You see, all these church people, you just be tithing for rubbish, you just be tithing and, uh, and be giving and be wasting your money and be enriching your pastors. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are people are people are uh, Saudi Arabia is a very rich country today, they are not tithing to anywhere. Nigeria, you are too religious, always praying, always doing program. Dubai is a Muslim country and they are doing far better than Nigeria. So you guys are, what, you are wasting your time, wasting your time in church. There is a divine way to be prosperous. 
Hallelujah. Brothers, it was God that blessed Abraham. It was God. About say God blessed him and he was rich. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how we are going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I hope you know. Let me just drop this one. If I go and meditate and pray about it, let us show it to you. I hope you know that in the original template of God, you were not designed to walk before you eat. In the original template that God gave to man, man is not expected to walk before he eats. Some of us, we have become work-minded. We have tied. That's why it's difficult for you to even tie it. That's why sometimes it's difficult for you to close your church shop and come to church. Because you have tied your... You have tied every money you have around how much I work. But I, I hope you know that working is a cost. Laboring and hustling before you eat was a cost, not a blessing. Now, man was designed to work, but not to work so he can eat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting this. You know what God did? He prepared the garden. Furnish it with every kind of fruit. Then he told Adam, eat. I have provided food for you to eat. Now he now said, because there is food for you to eat, eh, you can't be here and do nothing now. Then he told him, do what? Take care of the garden. So he didn't need to plant and labor. Then the tree will grow, then he will start eating. From the day one, when he arrived in the garden, food was available. That's the design. But after man fell, what happened? God told him, he said, out of the sweat. Eh? <laughs> he said, you will labor before you eat. Many of us, we are still under the course. Meanwhile, Galatians 3, the Bible says, God has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made the cause for us. So, you must run, you must this is why I said when you read God's word, eh? So you will see many things that will change your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to come out of the course and come into the blessing. In the blessing, God provides for you whether you work or not. You know, Paul wrote to the church. He said, Let him that does not work, let him not eat. Abi. Yes. I hope you know, know that he wrote it after they have been eating for long. Those guys have been eating. Because what I hear we bring, what I see we bring, what I, everybody will bring food, then everybody will eat together. So that continued for a while. The important thing is that there are some people they will not work, but they will be the first to, <laughs> to eat. Then they gave an instruction that how can you be eating comfortably and you are willing to work? So that was the blessing. You are meant to work because there is food. Not walk before you eat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Now these things are very deep. But I know that if you continue to pray on it and meditate on it and begin to, you know, reorientate your mind, you begin to explain the reality. You, you are not an orphan. You are the child of a king. He said, I own the cactus upon a thousand hills. He said, silver and gold, they belong to me. Some of us are going to school now. You see some of you doing everything hard, running to school. They just this, this rich boys, <laughs> rich, rich kids that you just bring in in one very fine car. You just bring him in. The guy will just stroll in and, you know. Because <laughs> his father is a rich man. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So understand that there are, there are a lot of realities in the word of God. That you won't be able to touch them if you don't read them. I hope you know that people died so that we have Bible to read. How do you know that? But today all of us have a copy. In fact, it's on our phones. We don't read it. 
Hallelujah. So these are realities available in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when you one of the prayers people pray is that they always pray that they should touch, uh, they always pray for open doors, are they? So it's come from a mindset that there are closed doors. And um, you see, a closed door is only a problem if you don't have the key. Have you understand that? You have the key in your pocket. Now, I'm sure most of you locked your house before coming, if there's nobody there. Now, how many of you get to the door of your house and then you start praying, Father? This door you must open. Eh? In front of your own house. Now, when you get to the front of your house, what will you do? You put your hand in the cabin, then you insert the key and open the door. That was a closed door. But it's not a problem because you have the key. Hallelujah. So when I tell you that I don't have problem, that's the, exactly the way it is. Because for every door, every door that seems long, they don't bother me because what? I have the key. All kinds of things happen, but there are no problems because the key is always, always available. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was, uh, I was traveling to the east some times ago. I think two years ago, there about. So I just bit one of my cars then, like, bit it. <laughs> I took us then. Bit the car, it was already nice. I only took it to Ibado, there about, and then I was going to the east. And while we were on the express road, very close to each other, a trailer started reversing back. On the road, though, double lane. <laughs> I was on him, Ogana, I'm waiting for him. <laughs> he kept coming, you know. I tried to reverse. By the time I reverse, there's another car behind me. So already, when I was when I was about to hit that car, I had to match the brake, but the trailer was still coming. Because the trailer hit the car, swallowed the entire bonnet, pulled the car to hit the one at the back, and then stopped. So then, we came out, and uh, okay, long story short, they gave us some money. I think what was point was around the hundred thousand plus or thereabouts. She just managed to give us just a little, and um, but then, you know, for an African, that would be a problem. But to me, it wasn't a problem. You know why? See, right on that spot where that accident happened, there was a panel beater that was already waiting for us. So immediately the, we settled and everything was gone. The guy just said, "Ah, I'm a panel beater. I will help you." The guy entered the car. I don't. On it, I only pass on it. I've never stopped the monitor before. So this guy followed us, took us to where they are selling things, ensured we bought a new bonnet, bought a new fender, ensured we got everything we needed, helped us to negotiate. Someone that like did not know from Adam. Ensured everything is in, is in a good condition. The exact money on my mind to give him, that was the exact money he asked me to pay. Immediately made the money I said, in fact, that's what I wanted. I, I paid him. And that same day, I see I arrived at my destination without problem. So it seemed like a locked door. Okay. I added to that, the money I need to fix the car, I didn't need to call somebody and say, eh, please oh, help me. The money was available. The client I was going to meet, where I was going, when he heard what happened to my car, he asked me, how much did you spend? He, he still even paid me again. So what other people we call problems for me? They are not problems. Because every time there is a locked door, there is always a key. And that is how you must work. See, it is not because I am special. There is nobody special in this world. The Bible says the eyes of God is moving around. He is looking for people in whom he will show himself strong. Always, please, put this at the back of your mind. This will change your life. Number one, this was another three hours teaching. Number one, understand that God loves you so much. You need to come to a place where you are absolutely sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God loves you. 
And never you try to tie that love around how perfect you are. Every time you tie the love of God around how perfect you are, you will have a, a, a defeated love life with God. When you know that God loves you so much, how do you know who God is? <laughs> I just hope that you know how powerful God is. Now, when you know how powerful God is, and you now know that that God is your father, forget about problems. Now, this is how I move around. My father is, we call him omniscience. Abi? He has the ability to know things before they happen. Eh? Abi now? So, if my father knows things before they happen, it means that Anything that happens to me that looks like a problem, it may be new to him, but it's not new to him. Yes. Are you seeing the point now? Yes, See, if you apply this thing for every single talent in your life, I tell you, you will stop having problems. Because this is how you activate faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When you understand that, number one, this father, he loves me so much. I am the apple of his eyes. He has engraved me on the palm of his hands. My world is ever before him. Some of you are still praying, Lord, remember me, remember me, remember me. You don't know God's love yet. Yes. This is a prayer point that you must remove from the dictionary. He said, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hand forget. He said, no. He said, let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. He said, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let me let my hand forget forget his skills upon the harp. If I don't prefer you above my chief joy, so I have engraved you upon the palm of my hand. It means that he keeps your picture in his wallet. It means that he, he, he you know he has tattooed your picture on his hand. You know, some of you know tattoos now. If you can tattoo somebody on yourself, it means that that person is very important to you. That's what the Bible says. It says, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your words are right before me. So you must have that security. That love is not dependent on how good you are. Understand? It's dependent on the fact that he is, he is your father. He gave back to you. You know how you parents love your children? You know now? Even though they have done wrong, you, you are still there to, you, you, you have a child, you say, don't touch fire, touch fire. Now, after he has touched fire and the hand is born, will you say, hey, hey all of them, don't catch you, cry very well. Is that what we do? Eh? I know fathers can be, can be very, very, I don't trust fathers. Mothers, how far? Eh? Will you watch him to be crying? I say, cry very well. You, you, you will be running from pillar to post, looking for medication on how to take care of him. Hallelujah. He said, can the mother forget his suffering child? So God said, in case you are not sure, you are not sure of my love as a father for you. Understand the love of a mother for his son. He said, he said can the mother forget his suffering child? And not give a tale to the child of his womb. So you are still praying the prayer of the Old Testament. When the Lord remember me. How can he forget you when he, is, he has you on his hand? So, let's not go there. It's a long journey. So, when you are secured in this love, and you understand that he knows all things, then you also understand that he has all power. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, when you combine these three things, you don't have problem again. When you face a problem, you are not asking, God, help me. You are saying, God, you have seen this thing before it happened. Where is the help you are providing? That is the attitude towards problems. You are not asking God, God, why, God, why, God, why? What's, no, 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 no. You are, you are, you are, you are only concerned. You see, when you think like this, even Satan will be tired of troubling you. Even Satan. He will be tired of troubling you. Because you know this one. <laughs> he, he has the key already. So why should we trouble him? 
So you, you discover you begin to have lesser and lesser problems. Hallelujah. I tell you, I have been in situations where, humanly speaking, there is no way out. Humanly speaking. There is, humanly speaking, no way out. And I have seen God come out in very strange ways. Very strange ways. Out of misunderstanding. It says, they that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. A child of God can never be stranded. You cannot get to a place where you, 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 are, not, you are now helpless. You are now at the mercy of a man. I tell people, if we are not supposed to beg God, then we are not supposed to beg man. Yes, sir. If God says, don't beg me, ask, and it shall be given unto you, then you are not entitled under God. If you say please to anybody, it's a matter of courtesy. You don't beg. Amen. You don't come to a place where you are not a pity, a pity, a person to be pitied. Papa, no. You walk with your shoulders high, like the son of a king that you are. That even if somebody chooses to block your path, you are very confident that you have a God in heaven who has opened 10 other doors. I was a student in school, still a student, when I had me, I, I knew all these things. When God showed me the secret of divine provision, I spread in my in my school. I said, even though now I am not working, and my parents are the ones feeding me. I said, if my parents should die, I said, I will be living bigger and better. I'm telling you this, I said maybe like 10 or 15 years ago. I said, I'll be living better than I'm living now. Because when, when Satan closes that door, God will open 10 more. So when you think like this, Satan will be tired of troubling you. <laughs> so this one, <laughs> anytime we throw anything at himself, you know they walk. They will just leave you. Hallelujah. So this that, that's the revelation. That's the revelation. Hallelujah. Can I tell you one story? It's like today. You don't want to go to this teaching. No? Praise the Lord. I hope God is blessing you. How God is blessing you. Yes, Please pay atten attention to God's word. There are a lot of secrets there. Find the good fight of faith. You have to stay and say, no, if God's word has I've said it, then I must see it. You must live like that. You must live like that. In our days, we must prove that the word of God is true. We must prove it. Hallelujah. We must prove it. If the word of God is true, then let's prove it. We are practical now, Abi. Yes. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. We must prove it. When you go about with that mindset, challenges of life will just they they will be running from you by themselves. You will see problems getting solved. There's a story I heard years ago that really helped me to solidify this. I don't know if you heard the story of a, a young woman called Binta. She used to be a Muslim and then became a Christian. Who, who knows the story? Okay. Why, how can I say this story very quickly? I don't know how I can say it very quickly. Because of time. But this is what happened to her. Let me just try and say it in one minute. Binta became an evangelist, so she began to preach from place to place. So she went with her team to one of a, the northern states where one of his brothers is living. Now, Binta needed 80,000 naira to transport his team from that location to that location. But at that moment, they had no money. No money at all. So Binta said, ah, I mean, this time now, I, I, I have a brother here who is very rich. 80,000 is, you know, no money to him. Let me just go and meet him and let him give me the money. So he went to ah, a long time, this and that. So they tried to kill him in the past, but now things are normal. So he now told the brother, who is still a Muslim? Uh, I need 80,000. This is what happened. My, you know, just help me out. And the man went, this, brought out 80,000 and gave to her and said, take. Jumped on, dropped it on the table and said, take. Because I can see now that your Jesus cannot provide for you. And you still need to come to me to, to provide for you. So when Binta heard that, Binta refused to collect the money. 
and said, I will prove to you that my Jesus is big enough to take care of me. Binta left that place. Before Binta got to the road, Binta received a call. Somebody called me, Binta, and said, where are you? I have been looking for you. So what happened? He said, two weeks ago, please take note of the word, two weeks ago, God told me to give you 80,000 naira. He said, I have been trying your number, I have been looking for you, I have been unable to get across to you. Where are you? He said, I'm so town. Ah, that is where I am also now. Where are you? Let me bring it to you now. And under two hours, Vinta was holding 80,000. Now, you see, the beauty of this story is that the commandment was given when? Before Binta knew that we have that problem, there is an omniscient God who saw it coming and he has provided the way. And I assure you that Binta is not special. God is not a respecter of persons. I can tell you personal stories like this. Like this. Hallelujah. Please seek to know God. Then you have one of testimonies like this in your life. How God comes through for you. In the next few weeks, go and practice these things and we will, there will be testimony here on Sunday. Sharing how God came through when it looked like there was no way. And please, this thing is, you see, you see, hey, the direction we are going tonight is very strange. We can get a plan for this. You see, one of the biggest mistakes that we make today in the church that put us in problem is, is that we think that God is unpredictable. So, ah, God help me to communicate this. God indeed is mysterious, have you? Well, he says, my ways are past finding out. As in, but when it comes to his nature, he says, he says, I am God, I change not. Say, as I was in the beginning, that is how I am now. And that is how I will always be. When it comes to how God works, the manifestation of his power, you can't predict it. It means that if I need 10,000 error, I cannot say that it is pastor that will give me. I may think pastor may give me 10,000 error last week. But now I need another 10,000. Eh? God may require me to go and probably do one small business. And then the money will come. How do you get that now? God can make somebody who has forgotten me to just call me and say take money. So the ways through which God acts, you, you don't try to box God. So the way he acts, but that he will act, you must be 100% certain that he's going to act. Because we call him the faithful God. He is very consistent in his nature. He doesn't change. So, when we pray, we say, let's just keep on praying. We don't know if God will answer or he will not answer. No. That's not correct. That's not correct. If you have understood that this thing I'm asking is in alignment with his will. You see, when I was praying for people yesterday, I'm not asking, God, should we heal this one or not? God, do you want to heal this person? No. <laughs> when Peter, um, Peter and John, have you, when they saw the, the, the lame at the beautiful gate, did they first thought, to, this one, <laughs> do you want to heal this one or not? He says, silver and gold I don't have. Have you? Yes. See what I have. Because Jesus has given us something already. It is called his name. So they know that he said, everybody has silver and gold in their pocket. For us, we don't have it in our pocket. But there is something else we have in our pocket. It's not with God anymore. It's now with us. Are we getting that? That thing is not with God. It's now here. So we now, we now use it the way we please. Use it the way we please. So God is consistent in his nature. A thousand and one times, when, when, when the children of the Israelites face a problem, 
Was there any time when Jesus, uh, Moses went to meet God? I said, God, what should we do now? God said, um, for now, I don't want to save them. Let them suffer small. Did that ever happen? When they faced the problem, then God said, Moses went to meet God. God, don't save your people. God said, wait for three more days. <laughs> Give me seven more days to handle the matter. Did that ever happen in the Bible? Did anybody come to Jesus, to Jesus for healing? And Jesus said, wait, we can't heal you yet. You need to be patient. Be patient for three more years, then I will come out and heal you. Is that happening in the Bible? Because God is consistent. Every time there is a closed door, there is a key. Except you don't understand his will. And there are very few cases like that. Especially when it comes to things like sickness or lack. These are things that you must not grieve for anybody on, on, on this matter. You don't grieve for the devil on this matter. Sickness, lack, problems that stand in the way and refuse to go. You see, there are things you cannot pray for. You can't force yourself to get promotion at your place of work. These are things you pray for that you don't need those kind of prayers. You can't force yourself to buy 10 new cars. These are things that are sponsored by covetousness. Hallelujah. See, I was as rich as I am rich now when I did not have a car. Since the day I, everything in my account is less than a hundred thousand, I have been living in abundance. Praise the Lord. I walk with my two legs and I walk with my two legs with pump. I feel bigger and richer than some people that are driving big cars. Because being rich is, first of all, a mindset. It's a mindset. You see, the way I am like this, I am richer than Bill Gates. So. Because there are things that that man is still looking for that he still needs me. I don't have a problem. You are the one that is thinking of how to, how to, you still have, you still want to buy this and buy that. I am so content with what God has done for me. Hallelujah. I'm so content. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, I have everything I need. That's what our NLT puts it. Everything I need, I have it. So some of us, before you can become rich, God must first deal with your covetousness. When you are no longer covetous, you already have iPhone 13. You are disturbing the gates of heaven with iPhone 15. And you, and you are crying as a God, I have a problem. <laughs> you, will, you will continue to have a problem, there's no doubt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As big as big is, is, at least I just wanted to see him. He does not have a wife. <laughs> Abi? Baba is so rich, he cannot keep a wife. Abi now? I use that one, see now. Abi now? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So there are realities in the kingdom that you must access. This is meant some saying together now. There are things that all teachings, all teachings should handle. But I feel like if I just sow this seed, if you hear this now, when you start reading your Bible and you start seeing it, you start thinking differently. You don't need to have the whole world to be rich. I did a teaching last year on working in abundance. How that even if you are any 20,000 naira, you can still live in abundance. You can have more than you need. That was just let him that still, still no more, but let him walk. Not so that he can eat, but so that he can have enough to give others. You must live in such a way that some of us we live from borrowing to borrowing. You are forcing yourself to shall buy a car by all means. You are forcing yourself to build a house by all means. The money you use to eat your eat, eat and be okay and be fine. You are trying to pour into a business by all means. Because of covetousness. Meanwhile, the Bible says you must live in such a way that you always have more than you need. It says God is able to make all grace sufficient for us that we may have everything, something like that. 
and so that we can abound to give others something like that. Abound to all good work, something like that. So if you have 20,000 you must spend it in such a way that even when they go to give offering in church, you still have. When someone is hungry, you can still give. That's how I have lived all my life. You don't spend more than you earn. If you are earning 50, you spend 20. You have like 30. Enough to save. Enough to give. Enough to be a blessing. When people have problems, they can run to you. You still have money to give them. Even though you are not earning as much as you are earning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, let's come back. Let's see. Do you see our time? Hope you are getting blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um. So we are going to talk about <laughs> about the idea of and what I really wish to emphasize tonight is um, I wanted to take us back to Genesis but I don't know if I can take 20 more minutes to deal with that so we can close praise the Lord hallelujah you see I can pray for you with, again and again but you see, uh, praying for you is not as impactful as when you hold the truth yourself. It's just like when they say, uh, don't, don't give me fish. Abi, teach me how to fish. Abi, that's, that's why this teaching is very important. You know why people will not stop praying against their enemies and praying against problems and problems never finish? Because when they come to pastor, pastor give them fish. The fish will finish. They will come back again and say, pastor, give me more fish. So their life is already tied around pastor. But if pastor can take time to teach them how to fish, then they, 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 they will be disturbing, disturbing pastor again. Hallelujah. So it's important that we teach you how to fish than just trying to give you fish every time. Churches are packed full of people who just want to come and get fish. They don't want to learn how to fish themselves. Praise the Lord. So let me see if I can take just 20 minutes and deal with today's teaching. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Genesis chapter, chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I just wanted to clarify some of the things I said yesterday, I, I couldn't even finish, but I'm going to talk about uh, the, the matter of Christian suffering also, but maybe, maybe next time I'll, I'll touch that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Genesis 3, we are aware <coughs> that <coughs> God uh, called out to Adam and God said, where are you? Adam said, I was naked and I hid myself. And God asked, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the fruit that I commanded you not to eat? What was his reply? He said, The woman <laughs> that you gave me, Abby, he gave me to eat and I and I ate. Then God turned to the woman. Woman, what have you done? Simple question. Ah, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You know what the woman said also? He said, the serpent, Abi, beguiled me and I eat. You, I hope you know that he also blamed his husband by saying that. I hope you know. I will tell you. you <laughs> hallelujah. Do you know that Adam had named all the animals before Eve was given to her. How do you do that? <clears throat> when God saw that it's not good for the man to be alone, God said, I will provide a herb, a bit, meat for him. Next, the Bible says, and God caused all the animals to come to Adam. And Adam named all of them. 
Then later on, the next verse, God now said, and God called a district to come upon Adam. Abi. So he had named the animals before he got a wife. So there was no way that Eve knew the serpent. If not that, Adam introduced the serpent to, to Eve. Are we getting that? The mere, the mere reason why he could call the serpent the serpent is because somebody had introduced him that, see, this one who is called serpent. So, in, in, in essence, he was only saying that it is <laughs> the serpent that Adam introduced to me. <laughs> he is the one that uh, gave me this thing to eat and I did Now, Adam refused, refused to take responsibility. If he refused to take responsibility, he also pushed it, the food doesn't really push it to the serpent. Of course, God had no discussion with the serpent. But then, serpent took responsibility. Now, understand this. That the person who has the responsibility, the person who is at fault for whatever is happening in your home, is also the one equipped with the power to either destroy it or make it. I will repeat. The party who is at fault, at fault means who has the responsibility of destroying the home or causing trouble in the home, is also the person equipped with the ability to repair it or damage it. So when Adam pushed that response. He said, no. There is a problem in this family now. But it is not mine to fix. I did not cause it, and I will not fix it. So he pushed to the, to the serpent, to the, to the, to the wife. Abby. The wife said, I did not cause it, I will not, I will not fix it. What did he do? Push to the serpent. Abby. Now, the serpent took full responsibility. Now, because the serpent took responsibility, that's why there is a problem in the world today. Because if if I hand over the making or destroying of my home to the devil, what is he, is he going to do with it? So you see, one of the biggest problem in the home today is this simple thing: that the husband has a hundred percent belief. That my wife is the bad one. It's her fault. She's the one that did not want me to have peace. So, as a married counselor, when I speak to the husband, the husband says, It's my wife. Who, she did this, she did that. Sometimes they will say, I know I'm not perfect, though, but there is my wife. She did this, she did that, she's bad, she's this. Then I say, Okay, sir. I, I, the way you are talking, it looks as if you should go and kill your wife. Who, she must be a very evil woman. I say, yes, so ah, she's somebody that you should run away from. So okay, sir. I go to the, to the wife. Wife, how far? Tell you about your husband. Ah, very evil man. Hey, is this? Is that? Is this? Is that? That is how many homes of prince. The same problem in Genesis. That nobody is willing to accept the blame. A thinks B is a problem. B thinks A is a problem. We keep on pointing, accusing fingers to each other. And by pointing, accusing finger to each other, we invited a third party into our home. There is a third party that is called the accuser of the brethren. Every time there is accusing spirits in the home, you enthrone the devil in that home. You see? Even heaven, even heaven could not manage the accuser. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says he was cast out. Heaven rejoiced. Abi? So everywhere there is heaven, the accuser will not be there. Now, the reverse is also true. That everywhere there is the accuser, heaven cannot be present. 
So now you understand why, why there is no heaven in the home. It is because the accuser is present. Hallelujah. I am yet to see a home where a man comes to the point himself and says, please help me. I am the problem of my home. No. They are always coming to the point of that person. And Jesus said, every time you see a moat in the eye of a brother, there is a high tendency, there is a demon in us. And Jesus said, every effort you make to remove the moat in your brother's eye will end in futility. Because you are unable to see the being in your own eyes. Why is it like that? That the wife thinks the husband has the biggest problem. The husband thinks the wife has the biggest problem. Why is it always like that? Why? I thought if I have a problem, I'm, I'm supposed to see the problem. Have it? How can I be the root cause of the problem of this house and I can't see it? And it's my wife who sees it. Meanwhile, <laughs> eh, I think my wife is the main problem of this house. She cannot see it. I'm the one seeing it. It starts to inform both of us that both of us have problems. Are you getting this? And I can tell you that every home where there is problem, this is the fundamental principle. And as long as you think like this, heaven will be far from that home. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you getting something? Now, let me take it a little bit further. Praise the Lord. You see, human being is not wired by, the, by, 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 by sin. Sin wired us to be self-conscious. Sin wired us to think first about ourselves before we think about our neighbor. So you see, the way sin started originally, eh? I hope you know what we, what we call the original sin. Praise the Lord. The original sin is the mother of all sins. The mother of all sins. How did sin enter the universe in the first place? Because God did not create sin. Have you now? Where did sin come from? Very simple. One angel. One shining angel started thinking about me. How do you know that? Isaiah chapter 14. One angel began to think about me, what I want. And that's how sin entered the world. That's all. And the same principle that made him enter the world, entered into Satan, he used that same principle, marketed it to Eve also. He made Eve to begin to think about me. He said, if you eat this fruit, let me tell you what we have to do. So he made Eve to think about my own interests. Not what God wants. No, 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 no. But you tell couples, see what the Bible says. No, 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 no. Don't tell me what the Bible says. See what he's doing to me. See what he's doing to me. So Satan told Eve, see what God says. Don't listen to him. See what is good for you. So immediately Eve thought about me. See, he entered. And God left. Hallelujah. So, when Jesus came, he looked and said, he thought it not robbery, even though he's equal with God. Have you? Yeah. Says he, he made himself of no reputation. He surrendered himself to death, even to death on the cross. If he had thought about himself, he would not die on the cross. How do you know that? So you see, the New Testament began on the ground of another personality who failed to think about me and thought about others and laid down his life for others. So everything that the grace of God wants to achieve in your life 
is to make you less conscious about you. So we have dealt with the matter of being saved that you need to be born again. Now, you will not be surprised that even those who are born again, born again, they are still living, not, their life is still not different from a non-believer in some ways. Galatians 4, verse 1, the Bible says, the hair, as long as he is a child, David, he said, there is no difference between him and a servant, even though he is Lord of all. So you can be born. You remember I told you, told you about the baby yesterday, Abi? He is a baby. You see, a baby is sweet and loving. A baby is innocent and beautiful. But a baby is useless to everybody. If a baby is here right now, if that baby needs food, eh? the baby will start crying. He won't say that, ah, they are pretty here. Let me keep quiet. Eh? If the mother is not feeling fine, the baby does not care. Babies are born to be naturally selfish. He can't wash the car, he can't clean anything, you can't send him on an errand. Now imagine if after 20 years he's still like that. Some Christians are like that. 20 years in their faith, but they are still brats. They have no grown. So sometimes it's hard to tell. The difference between their life and the life of a sinner. Because how do you say you are a human being and you cannot work? You cannot work. You say you are a human being, you cannot talk. 20 years, you are saying, <laughs> then you need food, you cry. You want to sleep, you cry. After 20 years, how can you co convince me that you are a human being? I will start thinking maybe you are a cat. You know, there's a way cats cry, <laughs> and you cry like a human being. They call them copy cats, are you? So that is why it is important that we grow. And the process of growth is called the process of sanctification. And what is sanctification is very simple. That you become less and less conscious about me. The problem is that we go into marriage. We don't know. Hey, marriage people will tell you that you everybody thinks you are a good person except your husband. Yeah. Abi? Abi now? Everybody respects you as a eh, that sister, I just like her, except your husband. As a husband, we say, I, I am respected everywhere except in this house. Some of us are familiar with that kind of language. Like, you see, it's because that, that's the only person that knows you. And one of the beauty of marriage. That's all of you. Everybody should get married. Because you will think you are a good person if you marry. <laughs> if you really want to test how much of God you have become, if you want to test your Christianity, go and marry. After you've been married for like five years, Charlie <laughs> is too much. Sir. After six months of uh, honeymoon, you will start seeing the kind of person you are. You will think you are very patient. Get married. All the fruit of the spirit you have will be subjected to test when you marry. Now, it will be, it will be unwise for you to think that he, the problem is this man. He just thinks I'm a bad person. You don't know that it is those things that are already coming out. Those things that are hidden, that you are not aware of. Your boss at work will never see it, but your husband will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So mind is beautiful for that reason that it will expose every everything. Some of you think you don't know how to get angry, but you, but you got married. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So marriage will expose all of those parts. So, but if God has helped you before you got married to deal with self, that's what it means to be a child of God. That you are no, you are you are already dead to this to, to, to the flesh. You, your life is not wired around me, 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 me. 
People get married only because of me. He sized up the man. This one get money. You will be okay. And he got married. And after one year, bitch is grew beams. <laughs> As which is flew away, the law also followed me. <laughs> or you married that because of the fine call and the fine face. But then Madam gave that to one. And after that, she became fat. Huh? All the figure eights become figure one. <laughs> then what happened to the beauty? With the beauty ways the <laughs> Well, they married for self. There are different kinds of love. But the kind of love that can sustain your marriage is what we call agape. It's the unconditional love of God. It's a love that says, I love you, not who I want you to be. Mm. Eh? Eh? Many people, they love who they want their husband to be. Not their husband. Always complaining about who he is not. Say, I want you to become the person I want to love. Meanwhile, you manage him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you don't let the man rest. Become that person I want to love. And the man is saying, love, love me for who I am. It is me you married, not who I am going to become. Praise the Lord. Of course, I won't blame some people also. Because they are, maybe some husbands also, or some wives, they also presented to their spouse before they married who they are not. They presented who they want you to love, not who they are. So you married who they claim to be, not who they are. So now you are married, they've gotten you now. So they... <laughs> Hallelujah. So sanctification is a process of becoming more like Jesus. And when you become more like Jesus, you are more you find it easier to lay down your life for others. To lay down your ego. Some husband, common sorry. It will look like rocket science. To lay down your ego. To lay down your life. To allow yourself to be cheated. To allow yourself to be robbed. To sacrifice your money. And do it consistently without fail. You know, some people can do it for the first two years or three years. Some people can, they will say, ah, for all these years, I've been doing this thing for you. But they go to a place, they reach their breaking points. They reach elastic limit and broke. And they... You will find out that the, the woman just changed. <laughs> Some years ago, the woman told me that God told her that God has removed the love she has for her husband. I said, Which God? <laughs> the God told me, I, I will remove the love I have. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, if all of us can be more conscious about the other party. If you are concerned about how can I present a better person to the other party, I'm concerned about how can I help him? How can I help her? How can I be a blessing? You wake up every day with a goal, and the goal is not that my husband will be good to me today, but that I want to put a smile on the face of this man. And when I see him smile because of what I do, that's where I get my own fulfillment. My joy comes from when I see you happy. 
when that becomes your goal, and that is the goal of being a Christian, Abby, we live to make God happy. So John told us, he said, if you if you claim that you live to make God happy, and you are not living to make your neighbor happy, he said, you are a liar. So because how can you make uh, God happy whom you did not see? And you hear that you are make, and you are making man happy that you see. So the, 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 the entire essence of Christianity, please listen. You now I've taught you how to live abundant life. I've taught you how to live above problem. They are very beautiful. But the, the main purpose for which you were created eh, is not to make everyone know. Uh, let me shock you. Eh? Otherwise, let's just kill all of you now. You go to the street. Have you now? Is it not better? Yes, Your main purpose, if God wanted you to be in heaven, he will not make you on earth. How do you, how do you understand that? How do you know that there will be a new earth later? How do you aware? Because we are not, we were not meant for heaven. We were meant for earth. So Eventually, we wrap up this earth and seek it on that earth and send us back to earth. You are not meant to live in heaven. Heaven is the home of spirit. You are not a spirit. You are a man. That's another matter. Let's, let's not go there. Let's not go there. You see, because if you are living only to make heaven, you will have problem. No one problem. You will likely not make heaven. Did I tell you why? Now, in the marking scheme of making heaven, eh, let's, let's use heaven as promotion to a new class, for example. Eh? In most schools, what is the lowest mark for anybody to promote to the next class? Eh? Who said 30? Which school? I want to know the name of your school. Oh, yeah, now, what's the mark? Now, that is the minimum requirement to promote, Abi. Abi? Abi? Now, what will happen to a student who says, I just want to promote? All I am laboring for is just to get 40. Now, what will likely happen to that student? There is a 90% chance that that student will fail. Now tell me what is the low, what is the what is one mark below the requirement of heaven? Where will you land? Eh? One mark below the requirement to make heaven. Where will you land? So every time you labor to make heaven, you are saying, God, just give me 40. All my labor, all my efforts, I just want to make heaven. I don't even care if I'm the gate man here. Let me try and enter here. There is a very high chance you never get here. Because you are laboring for the minimum requirement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there is, Bible calls it the price of the high calling of God. It is to become like Jesus. To whom he did predestinated. He also called to be conformed to the image of his son. The purpose is not to make heaven. The purpose is to become like Jesus. Are you getting that? So, becoming like Jesus is like laboring to get 100%. Yes. So, if a student is determined that this semester, I'm going to score 100%. No, if he labors like that, worst case scenario, he will get a B. Worst case scenario, a student that says, in this course, I want to get 100, not 90, eh? that labels to get 100. Worst case scenario, I mean, no matter how bad it is, it will end up in a B. But the one that says, I just want to pass this course. <laughs> the result will be read like anything. So now, when you labor to become like Jesus, heaven will be a walkover. Walkover. 
heaven will become your home. It will not be your goal. The goal is to become like Jesus. So you'll be living above, living above, not living at the lowest point. So the problem is that we raise many Christians who are just struggling to get 40E. Now, I'm talking second one now. If you are struggling to get 40E, you will have a problem. Because your life on earth will not be like Christ. You will be selfish like Satan. So selfish. So, several selfish people go into marriage. The marriage will have a problem in the name of Jesus. Because both of them are concerned about me. They are not like Jesus. Jesus is concerned about him. Is there no greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friend? I don't wake up and wonder what will my wife do for me today. I am thinking, how can I make this woman happy today? And every time she says you are the best man, I, 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 am, I, am, I, am, I am privileged, I am blessed to marry a man like you. Hey, Jesus. Jesus. My wife will do like this. My wife threw a party for me two years ago. And then a surprise party, I just came and met her. Then when she was told to speak, she said, he has made me a happy wife. She didn't need to do anything else. Hallelujah. When you live like that, when, be, when being a blessing becomes a blessing, hey, you must get to a point where you are happier when you give than when you spend. How do I get to that? When I give, I, I derive more joy when I give than when I spend. That's the life in Christ. He said, it is more blessed to give than to what? That's how to live. Now, because many of us, we have not learned this way of living. We go and marry and then we become a problem to another person. Because we are always saying, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. And there is no man that can satisfy you. Many times we are asking from man what is only of God to give. And every time you make a man to give you what only God can give, it's either you destroy yourself or you destroy the man. You must live in such a way that God becomes God becomes your sufficiency. You already have everything. You have too much to share with somebody else. You are coming to this marriage to share, not coming to take from it. You don't need him to make you feel loved, the make her to make you feel loved. You're already loved by the greatest personality in the universe. So you are sharing from that of somebody else. When you come to somebody and all you come to them is with blessings, they will, they will have no choice but to love you back. Everybody likes blessers. Eh? Yes. Some of you have friends, every time they come to you, it's always every time they call you, hello, Alpha. After small greeting, can I get you KJ? He did that today, the following week. He calls you again. And some of them are very funny. How fun? How is everything? How is your wife? In your mind, you're already like, I better say what you want to talk. Uh -huh. That's another topic. If I, if, I, if I begin to go into the way we praise and thank God sometimes, eh? you can't get there. I will not go there. Praise the Lord. Then, third time, he calls you again. Hello, how fun? How is everything? How is work? Oh, God, talk with you. You want to talk. Uh, please, uh, I actually need a. Uh, I, I, I want to go out now. I don't have money. Please, can I get like two K here? Let me tell you. One day he will call you. You will not pick. Even though you are the nicest person on net. Eh? One day he will call you. And it's either you pick or you are very reluctant to pick. You be like ah. Because he don't come again. Because nobody is wired to be God in your life. It is only God that you can keep on asking from and you will not get tired. So every time you come to your spouse with bring it, bring it, bring it, you are driving them to a place where they will be tired of you. But if you are always coming with take, my husband take, my husband take, but every time take, every time you are coming, you say, oh, no. Huh? 
We will be happy to see you every time. Yes. But every time, bring, bring, bring. Every time is what you are not doing. What you are not doing, you are not giving me. You are not giving me. You are not giving me. Give me, give me, give me. The man will, he will become crazy. When he sees you coming like this, he will not be happy. You know, today, problem has come again. Let me tell you, you can change this in your life. I'm determined your, that I will consistently make my spouse happy. I will derive my joy when I make them happy. Yes, sir. Change your life. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, you cannot do this by the energy of the flesh. Yes. That's why you need Jesus. You can live. This life is possible. I live like that. That life is possible. You can live in such a way that the, the, as in the, your high moment is when you are a blessing to others. One of the things that give me joy is when I take out money. Somebody is in problem and I'm able to take out money and give them. And that money solves their problem. That's how I get joy. Not when I go and spend it. And you must come to this place where you become wired like that. You must do Hey, flesh and blood cannot receive this thing. Eh? Flesh and blood cannot understand this thing. Because a natural man is wired to get. But the spiritual man is wired to give. It's called agape love. Jesus gave. People were killing him. He was still concerned about them. So even through his pain, he was still able to see the pain of others. Some of you, if you have a bad day like this, your husband said, well, you struggle in this house today. Every time you are in pain, you cannot see what others are feeling again. Your eyes is blinded by your own pains. But Jesus, he was hanging on the tree, blood going through his hands. Then he saw that some people have touched what they are not meant to touch. And judgment was coming for their sake. And even though he was in pains, he forgot about his own pain. He prayed, the Father, please have mercy on these ones. It's not their fault. If Jesus did not pray like that, some of them would have died on the spot. Because they broke a the law. A that law says, touch not my anointing and do my perfect no harm. So because they touched him, even though it was the plan of God, that law cannot be broken. So a commandment went forth that everybody that kills him, <laughs> go and pick them one by one and kill them. Jesus saw that in the spirit, even though he was in pain, and he prayed, Father, forgive them. It's not their fault. They don't know what they are doing. So through his pain, even while he was in serious pain, he was still able to see the pain of others. That's life in the spirit. Flesh and blood cannot do this. If every one of us can live like this, even this church will be a better place. People will come here and spend one more. They don't want, they don't want to go. In fact, one day they want to go again. Because everybody is concerned. Not about what I want to get, but about what I want to give. Every single person. If you have mastered this before marriage, when you come into marriage, it's very easy. People will say the first year of their marriage, there is trouble. Me, I didn't experience all of those. From the word go. It was sweet. And it's this sweet now. There was never a moment when uh, yeah, some bit, no, 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 no. Sweet from the word go, sweet <laughs> it continues to be sweet. You see, after six months, then after one year, after if I is sweeter now than uh, no, I'm not making mouth. My wife and I we are always doing video call since I've been here. Alpha, see your face. I like I love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's just go on feet and just pray. Today is for all Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you are here and uh, You want, you want Jesus to come into your life. You want this life. You 
can tell that mm -mm, I am not inclined like this. It's one of the proof. Anyway, I've been saved. The only thing is that you can still be saved and still be like that. That's, that's the battle. When you are here and you feel like, no, 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 no. I don't have the spirit of God inside of me. I don't have this generating machine of love. The Bible says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that is given to us. Romans 5, five verse 5. And you want to come to Jesus now so that he will put, he will give you a new heart. Some of you need a change of heart totally. He will give you a new heart and he will put a new spirit inside of you. Brother, you are, please come forward. I want to pray with you. You want to come to Jesus? You want to come to Jesus? You want to come to Jesus? You can tell that you are selfish. You think more about yourself. And you want Jesus to be Lord in your life. Anybody? Anybody? I'll count to three so we can go to other things. Anybody? Do you want to make Jesus Lord in your life? Do you want to be saved? Come forward very quickly. Anybody? 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 Hallelujah. These are all saved. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone begin to speak to God right now. Ask Him to renew your heart. Ask Him to sanctify you by the words you have received tonight. Ask Him to sanctify your heart by the words you have now received. You want to quit being a body. You want to become an everlasting blessing. You want to become a joy of many generations. You don't want to be a, a burden of many generations. But a blessing. You want to be the kind of person your husband calls you blessed, your wife calls you blessed. Ask God for grace now. Begin to renounce the power of the flesh. Say, you this flesh you will not destroy my life. You will not destroy my life. I renounce my allegiance to you. No longer will I serve you. I will serve Jesus. With love, I will serve my neighbor. With love, I will serve my parents. With love, I will serve my father. With love, I will serve my husband. With love, I will serve my children. With love, I will serve my wife. As for grace. I renounce the life of self. I will no longer serve self. I will no longer labor for my own interest, for my own, for my own joy. No, I will find joy in making others happy. Ask God for grace now. Ask Him for grace. Say, Lord, give me a new heart. Renew my heart through your word. Change my heart. Renew my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the flesh. I refuse to be like the devil. I refuse to be the accuser. I, I will be an advocate. I refuse to be an, a, 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 an accuser. I will not accuse my wife again. 
She is not perfect. She is not perfect. But I will love her with her imperfections. That was how Jesus loved me. Why love us yet sinner? He died for me. I choose to love my wife as Christ loved the church. I choose to love my husband. He has a lot of weaknesses, but he's my own. I love him like that. Even though he never changes, I choose to love him. Even though he never changes, I choose to love her. Holy Spirit, shed your love in my heart. Help me to care for my neighbor. Help me to care for, for my friends. Help me to care for others. Help me to care only about myself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see grace. I see grace. The Holy Spirit will do a work in some hearts here tonight. There is no miracle greater than this. I can tell you that. When the Holy Spirit Himself carries out an operation on your heart and you remove the stony heart and He gives you a heart of flesh. Jesus work on my heart. I want to love people. I want to care about people. I want to love people. I want to care about people. I want to be like Jesus.